So we're in search of Donate, Don Juan Oñate, the founder of New Mexico uh, back in 1598. So hopefully we'll find some evidence of his presence here. I'm so intriguing to me because he's, you know, he's Spanish, Spaniard. And so, you know, I just, just want one coin. I'll take one coin. Something that proves that he was here. Let's see. And we know that he was here because of the historical documents, so that's not in question. Oh, dang it. Gotta love the pool tabs. But, uh, you know, I want stronger evidence. I want the treasure. I want the treasure. I've done the Sanchez genealogy. See how George Sanchez? Oh, oh, I see. Okay, I've done the Sanchez genealogy all the way back to the people who came with Oñate in 1598. In 1598, Oñate, coming from Mexico, had colonists, he had Spanish soldiers, and he had a lot of Indios de, de, de Mexico, mm -hmm. okay? Anyway, he arrived in this area in 1598. Now, uh, what, what my hobby is doing genealogy, although I'm a retired math teacher, okay? Uh, what, what I did was go back and I found one of my ancestors that was with the colonists, uh, you know, that came with Oñate. Okay, from your knowledge of the area, did Doñate and his people stay here in San Eli for a certain amount of time before they moved there? Very, very little time. They, they might have been here maybe two weeks, uh, two weeks, maybe up to a month. Uh -huh. they, they, when they arrived here, they had been crossing over. Instead of following the river and coming up the Rio Grande in, from, from Texas, what is now Texas, they crossed over the desert. So by the time they got here, I mean, and they had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, animals with them. Uh, uh, you know, they, they needed water, they needed food and all that. So they stayed here and they found the river and then fish, and, you know, things mm -hmm. to eat. Mm -hmm. But they stayed here maybe, I would guess around, I'm not real sure. It, it, we could, it's probably written down in one of the, you know, the history books. Mm -hmm. right. They might have stayed here, I would guess, between two weeks and a month. And then they continued following the Rio Grande River up into into what is now New Mexico. Wow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what did, we're back in. what did we learn so far? Well, so far we learned that Juan de Oñate didn't cross through here. <laughs> no, absolutely not. And that's a little disappointing because um, I was sure, but. It's not that disappointing though, right? Right, it's not. I mean, we learned a lot that they might have camped around this area, the San Anisario uh, area, but maybe they crossed further down closer to El Paso, Texas, or maybe even going into Las Cruces. Yeah, so um, the story is a little convoluted. Like, this area used to be Mexico. Actually, I'm sorry, not Mexico. Spanish territory before Mexico even existed and so he uh, he came through here he did establish himself here um, the guide that we met very nice gentleman George he said he stated that uh, he probably would have been here for two three four weeks just to get settled after coming up through Mexico and then they moved up towards El Paso right and uh, the fact is that since this was not actually the United States at that time, and they were following the the levee or the Rio, and with the change of the Rio Grande, uh, it might have been that they did cross further over there towards the uh, New Mexico area that we know now as Las Cruces or El Paso, Central El Paso. So we don't know, but we're going to keep on digging. I see. So it actually, if we went metal detecting out here, it might be hard to find any evidence of Doñate. Uh, well, sometimes they find things like, you know, 
like also, uh, you know, in that trail, uh, wh when you, the, you know, when they're following the Camino Real, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, it follows the river to just past, uh, let's see, what is that name of that place? Well, I know past Las Cruces. Mm -hmm. I got a good signal. Is that it? Nope. Not sure what it is. It's probably aluminum, to tell you the truth. So I'm on the border here of America and Mexico. America's here. Mexico is right over, over there. Literally on the border. And just came across this. That would be a means to scale the wall. So. Yeah, probably not a place to hang out. He's, uh, you know, 500 years in the past. And he's long gone. Well, that is true. However, Don Yate's dad was a Spanish king who owned a silver mine. And he dealt in silver. That's how Oñate got his money for this expedition. And so... Guaranteed, he had his pockets full of silver, maybe other, you know, maybe gold too. I mean, you could buy gold if you have lots of silver. But um, I'm expecting that he had carried with him a small fortune so that he can establish his kingdom here in the New World. So that's why. So there, um, near uh, where where UTEP is, mm -hmm. near that area is where they crossed the river at that point, mm. the, the colonists and all that, because it was a, an easier place to cross. I think the river was over hard rock or something. And before that, you know, they would have too much trouble crossing. So they were on the south side of the river, starting here all the way until they got to El Paso, and there is where they crossed to the, to the north side of the river. Wow. And then they followed that going up. I'm actually on my way to UTEP. Sorry the road's a little bouncy. Um, I'm on my way to UTEP because UTEP is the site where um, Don Yate, Don Onyate, and his, oh my gosh this is not gonna be good is it? <laughs> uh, and his caravan crossed the river from Mexico side to the United States side, but of course, back then it was all Mexico. So, well, decided. Uh, well, I'm on my search for UTEP, and uh, came across this little park. It's called Dunn Park. I've never detected this park before, so figured I'd give it a try real quick. It's a really tiny little park. Check that out. Pretty small. You never know. You never know. I got a good signal right now. Let's see what I got. There it is. Looks like a mail key, mailbox key. Cool. Put that in the finds box. That's a good sign. Tells me that nobody, nobody has metal detected this area in quite some time. So 
Let's see what else we can find. Okay, got a good signal. It's a 90, it's probably a quarter. Yep, there it is. We got myself a quarter. Anything else? Always double check your holes. I got a quarter! <laughs> and lots of pennies. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna find. Alright. So that orange column over there behind that pine. Uh huh. That is their memorial to Don Oñate's crossing for the Camino Real. Shut up. I didn't even know why that was there. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. I'm trying to get a close up. <gasps> there it is. Okay. So that's the marker on their side. That's on Mexico side. That's the Mexican side and okay. it's like a drive around. Really? Yeah, a circle. May 4th, 1598, Don Juan de Oñate. Captain General Governor, New Mexico, first named El Paso del Norte. Through this old pass, the lowest snow-free feasible route from the Atlantic to the Pacific through the Rocky Mountains extended today the great trunk lines of telegraph and railroad. The city of El Paso marks the place and perpetuate, perpetuates the name. Ah, El Paso, the pass from the north to the east. And then in the back right here, Mexico has a bigger monument. That tower right there is a monument erected by Mexico to show where Doñate and his uh, caravan crossed over into this area. Sweet! No. Oh, so No, we have it. Oh, okay. Did you see Licon Jerry? We've been there. Oh, okay. We've been to Licon Jerry. Not today, but we've been there.